There's no danger from creationism casting doubt on evolution in the scientific community and arguing against it. And the reason for that is the scientific community will very quickly say, show us your facts, show us your data, show us your experiments. And if there are persuasive experimental data that argue against evolution, that would be an important scientific development. But the creationist or the intelligent design community hasn't been interested in doing that in large measure because they don't have any facts. And this is something that has come through loud and clear in the court cases that have been argued about evolution. The danger about inserting such arguments against evolution into the science curriculum is the effect it will have on the minds of students. It will tell students basically that they can't trust the scientific process, that scientists somehow suppress information, that they keep dissent away, and that they are not really interested in the truth. It will also tend to place students in a situation where they're presented with a false dichotomy, with a choice between an evolutionary theory which is hostile to their religious beliefs or an anti-scientific theory like creationism that is friendly to their religious beliefs. And that places every student in every classroom in the position of choosing between God and science. And that would be a terrible thing. This is a country where 90% of Americans will say they have a faith in God. If we give the message in the science classroom that going on in science, that evolutionary theory, the cornerstone of modern biology, is not compatible with religion, that will tell young American students that to go into science, they must turn their back on God, or to maintain their faith, they must turn away from a career in science. That would drive a wedge between the young people of this country and the practice and the profession of science. We are engaged in a global competition with other emerging countries around the world. And these countries, I'll take China, South Korea, Singapore, India, and Japan as my model, these countries understand very clearly that science is the future. Their educational systems embrace science and their young people in their training embrace science. If we breed a generation of Americans who turns away from science for any of these reasons, we are courting the road to national disaster in terms of scientific leadership. It would be a great tragedy for science and a great tragedy for this country if we did. Uh, putting intelligent design materials in science classrooms confuses students. It actually makes them more ignorant than they were before. Because at least before, they were given the impression that there were ways of approaching the natural world in science. And the materials from the intelligent design people suggest that that's not the case. In fact, there aren't no rules. Nothing's clear. It's all confusing. And this is really worrisome because they tell students that you can't get from point A to point B by a natural explanation, even matters of natural things. And this is before they've demonstrated anything is the result of a, an intelligent designer. And I, I find that that's a, a, it's a real problem because as we were able to show in the trial again and again, we're not making this stuff up. There's lots of evidence from all sorts of branches of science that shows that it is possible to get from point A to point B. There are lots of evolutionary transitions. There are lots of changes in the form and function of features in groups. There are lots of cases where entirely new adaptations arise, but they arise from pre-existing things that are used for a different purpose. We can show this again and again and again. And when you tell kids in advance of any of that evidence that it's not possible to do that, that's a real pedagogical problem. And moreover, it completely misrepresents what science is about. So a kid who goes through a curriculum like that is going to be confused, he's going to be stupid. Now why should you teach somebody something in schools that makes them more stupid than they were before? I think if you teach creationism as valid science in the public schools, you are miseducating students about both the facts of science and science as a way of knowing. Because the way we understand science in the 20th and 21st centuries is that we restrict ourselves to natural cause. Creationism goes beyond that automatically. 
creationism brings in an omnipotent creator as a causative agent and tries to call that science. And that simply is misleading students about what science really is. And of course, one of the problems with doing that is that you, you cut off the possibility of, of future research. If you are uh, telling students that God did it, which is basically what the creationist point of view is, um, there's no reason for a student to try to find a natural explanation. It's a done deal. We already know that, uh, that God did it, so why bother looking for a natural explanation? And of course, if you don't look for a natural explanation, you're never going to find one. So that is why, really, we restrict ourselves to, to only natural cause in real science as opposed to creation science. Because by restricting ourselves to natural cause, we keep ourselves honest, we keep, keep ourselves looking for that natural cause, even if, if it's very, very difficult to find. And sometimes it is very difficult to find a natural explanation for something. But you don't throw up your hands and say, well then, we'll just say God did it, makes it easier for us to, to do that. You just have to keep muddling along and, and trying your best. And maybe sometime in the future, maybe sometime in the future, you'll develop new instrumentation or new theory to allow you to go back to that problem and actually explain it through natural cause.